Frey in what you can I want to play. I want to play. I want to play in your Everybody and welcome to Dice Camera Action. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Here we are. Uh, <laughs> oh come on! No, hey, we, don't. We've been in the same initiative count for four weeks. <laughs> oh my god! I actually I just refound my uh, character sheet. Oh good. And I was trying to figure out. I think I have four out of 73 hp is that does that sound right to you chris you are currently unconscious oh right <laughs> right I, my mistake I told that to, it was I told a good try i told that to a friend of mine who's like another dude it's like so we've been in the same initiative role for like four weeks now is that normal and you just kind of <laughs> <laughs> you're like it's normal for us yeah that's, that's what happens when eight encounters become right. one encounter. Any, anyone remember the Amber <laughs> Temple? Anyone remember that? Because yeah. I do. <laughs> I don't. I was mostly unconscious. Right. I just want that armor back. <laughs> Too much to ask. It's well, okay, guys. I think this is still a stealth mission. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So previously in Dice Camera Action, the heroes were sent to the Fire Giant Forge of Iron Slag to find out what the giants are doing there. And um, they beat up some yak folk. Uh, they lost a couple of friends. Um, uh, Evelyn uh, claimed a suit of armor that was left behind by a dwarf named Crack. Uh, that armor was then taken from her and now lies about 10 feet away from her on the floor of a giant foundry. Uh, their armor that was left where fire giants um, were in the process of building a huge colossus. And the waffle crew animals uh, knocked the colossus over and sent it crumbling down onto the floor, which put the whole place um, on edge. And uh, when we last left the party, they were thrown down with the fire giants in the assembly hall. And Not my uh, choice. <laughs> at, one, <laughs> at one point, um, uh, Strix turned into a giant mammoth, and then Zalto used this pulsating adamantine heart on the end of a chain and a crane like a wrecking ball and slammed that into her, and then his wife, the Duchess, bashed the Mastodon over the head with her iron scepter, and Strix went down, and then Evelyn went down, and then Paulton... Uh, is still alive, currently conscious with one hit point, because <laughs> um, he had the wherewithal to take a few steps back at one point. There's a, there's a crit on the uh, death save. Like on the yes, side. yes, he rolled yeah. a natural 20 on his death save and sprung back to consciousness uh, after the Duchess threatened to beat him into a pulp. And I don't D like that Duchess lady. No, she's, she's terrible. Mean. And then Diath, realizing that his party was in dire straits and... Uh, uh, needed to take some sort of decisive action, basically ran up the Duchess to hold a short sword to her neck, threatening to stab her mightily if things did not suddenly turn to the Waffle Crew's favor. I did cut off her fingies, though. You did, <laughs> yes. You chopped off two of the Duchess's fingers, which I have to say is putting a little crimp in the negotiations. <laughs> uh, besides Aww. that, uh, most of the other fire giants are currently preoccupied with holding at bay the iron golem uh, that they have no control of presently and is currently uh, slicing and dicing them slowly to pieces. Uh, and uh, I can't remember the exact words you uttered, Diaf. Oh, but... it's, it was like whatever perfect words were needed is what I said. Oh, right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> With your I, ten, and that was <laughs> that was buttressed by a mighty roll of ten. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, time to cry. Time to cry. Mm-hmm. So, Sam was witnessed by a mighty roll of Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the game. And Hi. hello. Uh, so, you're playing a character named Cozen. Cozen. And yes. you and your companions. Mm. Uh, have arrived at Iron Slag under nightfall. Oh. And when you reach the bottom of the mountain, uh, you're looking for stairs carved into the mountainside leading up. And not too far from the base of those stairs, in the, lying in the snow, which is now falling from the night sky, right. uh, you can see what appears to be the half-frozen carcass of a three-headed monster with bat-like wings. A Leonian body, uh, its three heads, those of a lion, a goat, and a dragon. And uh, you and your companions kind of marvel at this for a moment and then find the staircase leading up. And the stairs have become quite icy, but you don't have any real trouble navigating them. And when you get to the top of the stairs, I'm sorry? Did the chimera die by falling down the stairs? It looked like it fell from a great height, but you also see evidence of it being in a fight. Oh, okay. And it's missing a horn. Yes, and it, it does look somewhat <laughs> mutilated. Oh, well, in that case, now I'm very impressed. <laughs> As you and your companions make your way up to the top of the stairs, you come to the Yakfolk village, uh, which is perched on a shelf on the mountainside. And you see evidence of more carnage. Uh, mm. Yakfolk bodies lying everywhere. My God. Um, yeah, it's, it's just horrendous. Uh, there, all you hear is the sound of a gushing waterfall pouring down the mountainside. As you look around at the carcasses, um, it's, it's very clear that this uh, battle, whatever killed the chimera, obviously made its way up here and continued its dirty work. Uh, you also um, notice, the four of you, that there is a big bird circling it's in, the, in the night sky over the Yakfolk village. Um, here it's wing flaps um, over the sound of the blowing wind and um, uh, Vireth hmm. uh, without a word um, pulls out her hand crossbow and uh, gives you a sign and your friends a sign to do the same thing alright, uh, draw my hand crossbow okay um, uh, you and your companions all fire shots up at the bird. Uh, make an attack roll for me. Thirteen. Okay. Tell oh us how you really feel, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, uh, roll a uh, roll damage for your hand crossbow. Hell yeah. Five. Okay. He had it coming. <laughs> All right. Uh, your shot and one other shot hits it. And you can see the bird obviously uh, sort of startled and wounded by this. Uh, and then it is not killed instantly and starts to fly off. Your shot and one other shot. And then you start to see that the poison on the bolts starts to take hold oh, and boy. it sort of flounders a bit and then plunges from the sky uh, missing the village and just falling down the mountainside damn no. well it couldn't be helped when you make your way through the set of iron doors you see the elevator shaft has been crippled uh, they've someone has destroyed the raising and lowering mechanism and so the platform is not coming up as told it would. Um, at that point in time, you and your companions use your levitate ability to sink down the shaft safely. Oh. And All when right. you, uh, you pass by what appears to be the elevator platform, which is just sort of suspended at a height about four-fifths of the way down the shaft, not going anywhere, you can easily move past it to land at the bottom of the shaft. And that's when you begin to hear sounds of battle. Mm. And are, are birds in there as well? You hear no birds. All right, well, if there are, I'm 
gonna mess them up. <laughs> <laughs> you make your way through darkened, wide, giant-sized passageways, um, uh, even uh, sort of uh, skirting around the edge of what appears to be some sort of large dining hall, entering another wide hallway, which has an overturned brazier lying on the floor, as well as a number of other braziers in niches along the walls, all to giant scale. And uh, as you make your way around, uh, you come to a corner. And as you and your companions step around that corner, you can see the, the battle um, being joined. Looks like a number of uh, fire giants engaged with some sort of black iron automaton. Uh, mm. And uh, at the same time, shouting over that, a voice calling for sort of a cease and desist. All right. And you also see a figure um, in the entrance before the room, uh, standing with his back to you. Paulton, I'd like you to make a perception check for me. Okay. Let's see. Uh, 16. Okay. And uh, Sam, I'd like you, on behalf of your companions, to make a stealth check for me. All right. <laughs> oh, God. 19. Okay. Uh, 16. You're pretty, you're pretty sure that you are not heard or All seen right. by the figure in the doorway. Good. Okay. Uh, Diaz. Yes. Uh, the Duchess uh, sort of, uh, she's got, she's looking over toward you angrily. Uh, you can see her hair is all now unkempt and in disarray, her bright orange hair. And she says, the odds are not in your favor. And then uh, see her husband up on the gantry just laugh throw his head back in laughter at you, not intimidated in the least by your desperate man. The sword still at her throat, uh, with whatever glare that Diaz can give him leaving in, she's got like the really angry eyebrows staring at, but I can only imagine is one large eye coming from her. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, you stand upon your last legs and I stand upon you. Ooh. Do you wish your graveyard to say that this Great Duchess, the fire giants fell to man. Ha! All right. Uh, and uh, we last left on your initiative, Diaf. Yep. Uh, did you want to do, or can you do anything? Oh, you used an action to move and then threaten, right? You're not going to actually attack her, but you will if she does something. I mean, what yeah, the, it's. What are the conditions by which you might stab her? Um, if they try to, uh, say, attack me at all or swing at me, uh, if they make any kind of uh, movement or actions to any one of my allies, okay. um, or the moment that DS realizes the hopelessness of the situation, uh, okay. basically sets, himself, sets aside his own life to make sure that, uh, at the very least, whatever vengeance he can get can, can be obtained. Okay. Um, I'd like you to make a perception check for me. Yeah. Great. I'm good at these. Uh, 21. 22. Okay. Um, you're trying to, you know, maintain awareness of the combat surroundings. Uh, you can see Paulton standing off into a doorway, looking quite hurt and battered, but alive. Probably a little terrified, maybe a touch drunk. Um, you see uh, your two... Um, friends, uh, Evelyn and Strix, lying on the ground. Um, I can't remember. I didn't write this down. Were they stable? Ooh, you remember, uh, Holly? I think we were totally stable. <laughs> 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 I definitely don't think that we were stable. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I think. I think I remember. You know. Okay. I think you, you I think you, Evelyn might have been staple. I legitimately had, don't remember. Actually, I think you had just fallen, so we hadn't even rolled a death save for any of you yet. Yeah, I don't think okay. I, I don't think we've rolled any death saves okay. yet. Uh, so what you do notice with your roll, DF, is Waffles kind of goes bounding away, not toward the battle, but kind of down the hallway past Paulton. 
yes, maybe one of us can live. <laughs> yes, and that's because um, Kozen, uh, you see Virith has sort of gone down to one knee and is coaxing the creature toward her. Oh. Well, that can't be good. Um, does, uh, does Drake see me? Uh, no one sees any of you. Hmm. The, only, the only creature that seems to have any inkling that you're there is the baby owlbear currently galumphing in your direction. Who's super cute and adorable and has never done anything to anyone. <laughs> yeah, and you definitely shouldn't drow poison it. <laughs> is it? It, it's it's a meaty little air owlbear, right? Yes, it is. And uh, there's, there's I don't nothing, like you saying meaty. There's there's nothing to indicate that uh, Virith is threatening it in any way. I will observe. Okay. For the moment. All right. So DF, you see waffles go bounding out of sight. Okay. And uh, next up in the initiative is Strix. So Strix, I need a death save. Yeah. Here it comes. Natural 20. Uh, nope, I got a three. Okay. <laughs> One failure. No. Okay. Uh, the other fire giants will go. Um, Grimscarda, the, the duchess, uh, she says, call off your golem and we'll talk about it. Call it off or this negotiation is over. Uh the other fire giants are bashing away at it and at uh, cracks earth elemental. That's All right. It. Okay. Okay. Um, does the Duchess said this? Yes. I hate that lady. Do I believe her? Hmm. I'll let you make an inside check. Okay. The answer is yes. I believe her. Okay. <laughs> uh, a six. Okay. Uh, what, what, basically, she's a little inscrutable to you at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in response, uh, uh, I'll say, release her weapons first and stand down, and we shall do the same. All right. Evelyn, death save. <laughs> Please. Uh, Lathander, bless me. Eight. Uh, okay. <laughs> One failure. At least Strix and I die together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's possible that like one of your arms just sort of fought, fell over Strix yeah. just as you passed out, and then Strix just sort of threw it off just as she passed out. <laughs> <laughs> Strix is like, I won't die together. <laughs> I can't take a character death this week, Chris. Okay. You gotta like tell the <laughs> dice gods or whatever. Uh, all right. Uh, the Duke uh, sort of casts his eyes up at his children who are one of the, on one of the other gantries, uh, looking down to see how he reacts to this current situation. And uh, you can see he kind of locks the chain of the crane. Um, and kind of reaches out and stops the heart from swinging for the moment, and while sort of hanging uh, off the gantry a little ways, uh, leaps down to the floor, uh, landing about 10 feet away from his maul, which is just sort of standing on its head, uh, and about 10 feet away from you, the and mm -hmm. uh, the Duchess. Mm -hmm. uh, and he comes to his full height, of about 24 feet, looks you square in the eye and says, You have attacked my home. Come in here uninvited and try to lay waste to my work. Why? 
I told you, our animals were lost. <laughs> you expect me to believe that? Who are you working for? Did you not see the owl bear? Owl bear. Little big, wide eyes, innocent face, very young. <laughs> he says. I do not. I do not. I do not follow anyone else's words. Fine. Uh, he says, you will stand down now or I will beat you into submission and make you my slave. What, you think I've got anything else to lose at this point? <laughs> he says, as he tightens his grip on the handle of the mall, yes, I believe you do. Strange, as I believe you do as well, it's at the pointy end of my sword. We both know she's got, doesn't have much left in her. A single swipe. He oh, says, <laughs> you don't know my wife. She is no frail thing, and she will not be felled by that. Try me. Do it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, admit it, you are dwarven spies. We're just bad pet owners, man. Uh... He says, you tried to rescue one of them. He didn't make it. Why? Was it Citadel Felbar? Citadel Adbar? Sandabar? Could be 100% honest with you, I don't even know who that dwarf was. It was I wasn't trying to save him for the record. Don't notice. Wasn't me. <laughs> Uh, while this is going on, uh, DF, your turn has come around again. Okay. Uh, we've been talking about six seconds now. Waffles uh, now sort of gets, uh, comes right up to Virith, Cozen, and she just sort of uh, pets it. Hmm. And seems to be very kind to it. Okay. And, um, she, and she sort of picks it up in her arms. Virith is perhaps a little distracted right now. Yes. Probably not watching me then. Currently at the moment. Uh, <clears throat> and these guys are all within range of my darkness spell, right? Uh, all of the drow would, are close to you. Well, not the drow, but uh, the, these, uh, these strange little pink creatures I have found. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, they're all within range. So feasibly, if I were to cast a darkness spell on this little exchange, it might give them some time to escape. It would. It would almost certainly be, you would, it would be very clear to your companions uh, that you had cast the spell. Yeah, but I mean, if we do that, I mean, fire giants believing that there's more trouble for them is not bad for us. I believe that. <laughs> I, uh, so, uh, so uh, DF, yep. um, is there anything you'd like to do on your turn? Um, so I'll respond to his question about being spies and working for certain people. He had mentioned a few other citadels. What were those names again? Uh, Citadel Felbar and Sandabar. Feldbar and Sandabar? Yeah. I'm just going to write that down real quick. Okay. Um. Uh, <laughs> at that point, uh, one of his, his son shouts down, maybe they're from Mithril Hall. Ask him if they're from Mithril Hall. Uh, 
his father just I'll, I'll respond by saying spies no we were in uh, colleagues with the dwarves of citadel sandabar yes but only with a simple goal we were sent out to come and slay harshnag the giant which if you actually look outside you'll find that we did from there things got out of hand admittedly you killed harshnag I can show you the body. Cozen. I am, uh, you know, call, call me crazy, but I don't really have a lot of faith in Drake's bluffing abilities here. I am going to try to cast darkness okay. on uh, this whole general scene. Okay. Uh, uh so you cast the spell. Suddenly, DF, you, and everyone around you, and Paulton too, are suddenly caught in unpenetrable blackness. You can't see anyone else around you. Do I have time to shout something? Yes, that's a free action, basically. In my crudest uh, impression of a dwarf accent, <laughs> I shout, basically, the jig is up, lads! <laughs> Over here! With the intention that they will at least be able to follow the sound of my voice. All right. Uh, when you do that, uh, your fellow drow all turn toward you incredulously. And, to, which, yeah. to which point I explain, if the fire giants think there are dwarven spies, they have one more distraction. That strengthens our negotiating position. And then I wink, just all. <laughs> sure. That always works. <laughs> Make a yeah. deception roll for me. Yay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Six. <laughs> Virith looks at you, drops the owlbear on the floor, and says, What? <laughs> I just meant that. If the fire giants assume there are dwarven spies going on here, they will be more inclined to use our little product to wage war on the dwarves rather than leaping, rather than going back on their word and going straight after dragons. He says, our only task here was to deliver the flask. That is all we were asked to do. There's that no is reason. all the demon queen commands of us. There's no reason we can't sweeten the deal a little. Wouldn't it be better to come back as instigators of a war rather than simple errand boys and girls? Uh, she seemed genuinely flabbergasted, having not thought this through at all. And she just, she just turns back to the darkness and turns to you, says, Suta Lord. This could ruin everything. Um, uh, and uh, she tightens her grip on the flask uh, tied around her belt. Actually, she removes it from her belt and holds it in her hand. At this point, as the darkness springs up in the room, uh, there are shouts of chaos from all of the fire giants. DF, suddenly the, the, the Duchess is clearly moving around and uh, so I know, like, I'm just suddenly surrounded by darkness, and I heard this scream. Not even sure what's really happening. Yeah. Like, it sounded like a dwarf cast of darkness. That's weird. That is weird. <laughs> um, yeah, so dwarves like, love darkness. So the moment, <laughs> so the moment that happens, I realize it's going on. Uh, so I, well, I'm still on top of the fire giant. I'm going to take my short sword, just slash across her throat, and then use both my feet to like backspring off of her. Okay. Uh, and to land on the ground. And to, then to get over to where Strix and Evelyn lie. Okay. Um, make an attack roll with disadvantage because you are she is currently invisible to you. But she's right in front of you. It's true. Uh, oh, that's not too bad. Uh, with disadvantage, 19. Okay, you hit her. Great. You have sneak attack because, hey, she can't see you. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you fucked up, bitch. <laughs> I'm really 
glad you didn't miss the giant right in front of you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> just, you know, just in retrospect. 24. Oh, okay. Uh, she screams out. And then you spring off of her? Yes. Okay. Heading in the direction of the shouting voice? Uh, towards where Strict and Evelyn lie. Okay. Uh, Paulton, what would you like to do? So all this is happening at once? Yes. So what, like darkness is cast, weird dwarf shout, and then yeah. like death? Yeah. What is happening? <laughs> 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 all right uh do you want to do anything else <laughs> um, like, okay i'm gonna go toward the well i'm not gonna announce it actually yeah I'm like never mind <laughs> i'm going to go toward the uh toward this uh dwarf okay when you take a few paces in that direction you suddenly emerge from the darkness to a torchlit giant-sized hallway wherein you see four elves with charcoal colored skin and stark white hair. Uh, one of them, two of them are physically bigger than the other two, but they're all kind of slender androgynous figures. And uh, one of them is dressed more like a wizard with these sort of web-like robes and the others are dressed in black leather armor or uh, uh, breastplates and uh, with spider motifs worked into them. And you can see that their eyes have sort of red pupils and there is spidery demonic menace to them. It is not what you were expecting to see at all. Uh, you can also see waffles not too far away from them. I step out of the darkness. It's like, oh good, more <laughs> edge lords. <laughs> <laughs> this and, is uh, just how we dress, ma'am. Yes. Uh, but they look like they look like your uh, brief uh, companion, uh, Drist, who you met in the wilderness, uh, only uh, darker and foreboding. Uh, you can see that the uh, there's a female who has long white hair in a ponytail has a fl iron flask in one hand, uh, which you can relate to on some level. Uh, <laughs> and it is sort of uh, got her finger sort of pointing into the chest of uh, one of her peers who has a pale gray spider tattoo covering his dark face. That should last forever, man. And as you come stumbling out, all the drow just sort of turn and look at you. <laughs> you want to do anything? You haven't technically used an action. Can I, can I use a free action and give him another one of those award-winning winks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the drow with the spider face tattoo gives you a curious... Loving wink. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't say love it. <laughs> a knowing, a knowing wink. Knowing, yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Clearly, though, not dwarves. What, what, it's like what? Did I already miss something? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I just. I don't know what to make of anything. Just you know, be cool. Be cool. <laughs> the, the, be, be the drow equivalent of cool. We're working on something. Uh, how many of your friends did you leave back there? Uh, friends? Uh, <laughs> oh, truth comes out. <laughs> wow. 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 Uh, like green, I think like a, a small litter of animals yeah no, no, no i don't care uh, about animals that's fair all right um yeah three three, three. all right i think uh maybe you could go back and get one maybe I, two i turn in darkness i'm like 
<laughs> well, you, re- you remember where they were, right? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it is advanced darkness, okay? It's it, it's it's fine. It's all right, cool. And I we don't, don't we don't we don't, we don't <laughs> need them all. Like, all right. I have a track record for listening to strangers, so in I go. <laughs> <laughs> so you disappear back into the darkness. It's that wink. All it's right. <laughs> so now you sort of blindly are in the darkness, um, probably oh not too God. far from where you were when you started. Uh, is there any anything else you would like to do? Because you know uh, both Evelyn and Strix are, were lying on the floor, not too far away from you, bleeding out. Can I... Uh... Can I try and would it be for me to navigate back to where they were? Or? Yeah, you could navigate back to where they were and sort of deal around. Oh, there they are. Okay. Are they am I aware if they're conscious or not? Um well they're clearly not conscious. Um they're lying on the floor. Now whether they're alive or not, you're not too sure about, but you could try to stabilize one of them. Hard to do in darkness. I'm gonna say that your medicine check would have disadvantage. Well, my other thing was to just drag their bodies. Oh, well, that could work as well. You could you could grab both of them if you wanted to, um, since neither of them are particularly heavy at the moment, and uh, pull them somewhere. Let, let's do that. Wait, okay. I pull up the where I met these new friendos. Oh, okay. Friendos. So you go back into the darkness after leaving it. You grab your two unconscious friends and you drag them out of the darkness back toward the drow. See, uh, how aware am I of Paulton doing this? Not at all. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, okay. Paulton, you do. Um, and uh, when you do, the uh, female drow with the flask says, Your friends, I please you. It's like, yeah, this is a normal thing. Yeah, right? so called <laughs> friends. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, now, Strix, you have another death save coming. Cool. Got a 15. Okay. Yay. That's one success. Yay. Yay. All right. Uh, Virith will pull out her hand crossbow. Um, she hands the, actually, first thing she does is she hands the flask to Choss. Fighter bodies. Why not me? Why not, indeed? <laughs> <laughs> you, just because I caused a problem, suddenly I can't be trusted with a flask. Not the first I problem. I feel like you fit right in. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, and then uh, she'll pull out her uh, hand crossbow and shoot Paulton. <laughs> Uh, she, she rolls an 18 on the die. Uh, <laughs> Jared's face. <laughs> uh, Alden, um, she does a whopping three points of damage, which is enough to put you down. Oh, God. And you just sort of fall on top of Evelyn and Strix. Oh, great. Back under I go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, my God. We're just a pile of bodies at this point. Can we please be on fire? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, there are fire dance around, so it's poss- just think possibility. It's also possible, you know, you just might spontaneously combust when you die straight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Evelyn, you got a death save coming. Ooh, okay. Oh, please. It's fine. Everything's fine. Please wake up. Seven. Okay. Oh, That's two. No. All right. Um, with the golem now fighting the giants in darkness and more chaos ensuing, uh, Zalto hearing the cries of his wife, realizing she has been stabbed. Well, um, that seems to uh, at least give you at least a moment, DF, to do something without being bashed on the noggin. What would you like to do in the darkness? Cry. <laughs> uh, obviously there was no way for me to see it but uh, did I hear anything like uh, Paulton 
I hear Paulton getting Strix and Evelyn and subsequently getting shot and plopping to the ground. I would say uh, under normal circumstances, you probably could have, but the sounds of the fire giants and the golem and everything else going on in here, the Gakui chamber seemed highly unlikely that the, the dragging I of your friends. I call out on my way down, oh, my body. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I will allow that. <laughs> so you could probably hear Paul over the din. You could hear Paul and say, oh, my body. <laughs> 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 and it seemed to come from roughly the point he was standing at before the darkness. OK. Appeared. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, so cutting action dash. Uh, I will make my way to where I thought I saw where Strix and Evelyn were. Yeah, and you find that they're not there anymore. Right. Uh, and just in that confusion yeah. uh, with the rest of my movement, uh, head towards where Paulton was, because maybe I was mistaken or okay. knew something. Because uh, at least I think you, sort of, him, he can grab you kind of blunder in that direction. Yeah. You eventually emerge from the edge of the darkness sphere where you're suddenly, the light is normal. Uh, and in the torchlight, you can see Paulton lying with a small sort of dart-sized uh, crossbow bolt in his shoulder. And uh, on top of Strix and uh, Evelyn, Evelyn looks in really bad shape. You also see four drow. Okay. About 20 feet away and waffles close by. All right. Not in imminent danger. Right. Well, at least everyone's accounted for. Okay. Uh, all you've done is all you've done is right. Um, probably a total about. Uh, so immediately confused as just the fact that Paulton was shot down by them. Yeah. Uh, that's not dwarves you know, that much. Right. Uh, I, I I guess uh, just really quickly I'll like speak at the entirety of the draw party. Just what's going on? Uh, I gesture to Evelyn and Strix and Paulton because they are all not doing too great here. Right. I will say, uh, we could talk about it or we could save your friends. Up to you. Um, yeah, look, looking back down at them and just back at the party, this I'll just say, yes, anything. Let me help them. All right. Can we... Uh, Can I uh, then immediately just go into a quick stabilize? Uh, sure. Evelyn's one looking the worst. Yeah, you can make a medicine check on Evelyn. If, uh, so. All right. Just right away. Yeah. Wisdom. Uh, 13. Okay, she, you stabilize her. Oh, fucking God, yes. <laughs> Good. There we yeah. go. Okay, there good. We go. Drow aren't all bad guys. So, oh, okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Still very much making a mental note of the fact that there is a crossbow bolt inside of Paulton. Yes. He, was, he, he, was, uh, he was, and, was hysterical. He was raving. We. He was hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> we we had to trank him. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Cozen, you're up. Uh, the giants all seem to be still pretty bothered by their queen, their duchess getting slashed up, right? You would assume so based on the sounds you're hearing. Oh, Evelyn, while you're out of the room, Diath stabilized you. Yay! <laughs> I'm so scared. Not on my watch! <laughs> Yay, Diath! All right, I will ask uh, my two thugs, not Virith, uh, right. to grab two of the other of the unconscious ones and ask DF to grab one as well. Yep. And then I want to, I want to suggest that we all bolt out of there. Yep. Um, Virith overrules you and says, oh, stay where you are. Crossbows out. I say in another second, the fire giants are going to realize that darkness was just cast all over them 
if we leave now, we can maybe convince them it was someone else that did it. But if they see a bunch of drow here, they're going to put two and two together. Vera says, we are on their side. Right. But. In case you forgot. I wasn't forgetting. I was just thinking ahead. <laughs> Not words I wanted to hear. In case, you know, if they assume dwarves did it, we can count on their ensured loyalty to our cause. If they assume we did it, maybe not. We might be on their side, but I don't think they're going to want to talk once they're, they find their duchess bleeding and darkness all over the place and drow just lurking around. You are conspiring against me. You are trying to make me fail my test of love. I see I that don't. now. I, I make... You know, see, it does not become you. I make the best groveling okay. position I can. Okay. Without giving her a chance to stab me. Okay. Uh, and I say, I am only thinking of your insured success. So deliver the flask. You merely pass. You'll be killed by another matriarch within a day instigate the war between the fire giants and the dwarves you'll return a hero not only will you pass you'll be elevated above everyone else and as your fortunes rise so do all of ours and our houses make a persuasion check hey oh, i'm so glad i'm unconscious through this so i don't have to panic uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that was a nine okay Add in a little wink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those dice. Those wacky dice. Oh, come All on. Right. Uh, the, other, the other fire giants are still um, uh, thrown uh, for a loop in the darkness. It's very clear, though, Diath, that uh, Duchess Brimscarda is still alive. Damn it. I um, hope she bleeds to death. Yeah, you can hear her screaming at her husband to find these vermin and smash them into pulp. Uh, he seems more than happy to, but at the moment, uh, the golem could be a bit of a conundrum. Paulton, you've got a death save coming. Neat. Roll a d20, add nothing to it. Cool. Here comes third natural 20. <laughs> 13 is a success. Hey. One success. Strix, you've got yeah, a no death one, save. No one stabilize me. I can only do one action per turn, Strix. <laughs> I'm on fire and sleep. <laughs> Yay, 15 again. All right, two Hooray. successes. Close to stabilizing on your own. Oh, All right, geez. Uh, it is the other drow's turns. Uh, Virith, forever stubborn and not as enlightened as you'd like her to be, Posen. Dogmatically following orders given to her by her spider queen goddess. Ignores you. Uh, blows you off entirely and orders you and the other three drow to open fire on the ath. Oh, orders are orders, buddy. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. I really um, like to imagine you just started crying in character. Do you have you see like three of the drow level uh, their hand? Vera three loads hers, and the other two level theirs at you. Uh, the one who was pleading for another plan, um, uh, well, he's technically already used his action, so he's, he won't be counted here. But okay, so I just uh, I try hard every day. <laughs> uh, so one of them rolled, uh, one of them rolled a twelve, which is not enough to hit. That was Vera. She missed you. Uh, another one rolled a seventeen. Uh, that is just enough. Okay. Uh, so when that one hits you, it does a whopping five piercing damage. Uncanny dodge! You take two of those. <laughs> and I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Oh. Because it is poisoned. Of course it is. So on a constitution saving throw, I add my dexterity, right? What? Great. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Uh, the Stone of Good Luck works on saving throws, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so I got a plus one. 17. Okay. 
Uh, you succeeded on that saving throw and don't suffer any other ill effects. <gasps> the final crossbow bolt uh, okay. uh, will also hit you. It does uh, another five piercing damage. Okay. And I need you to make a second save. The first time I've taken damage in this entire damn fire giant place. 19! All right, yes, you repel the effects of the drow poison and are still standing at the end of it. Yeah, I've got a lot of adrenaline going right now. Yep. (laughs) Okay. Single-handedly saving the party. (laughs) And then uh, uh, Evelyn, you're stable, so nothing happened in there. Uh, Zalto is... uh, You hear him bellow orders uh, to hold off the construct as much as possible. And then uh, he comes stomping out of the darkness and appears in the hallway right next to you, Dia. Uh, good. Uh, with his big maul uh, over his head. Um, and he sort of kind of blunders out, like he probably ran into a wall or a door before getting there. So he's a little bit discombobulated, uh, disoriented when he emerges. And so he, he takes stock of everything he sees around him, immediately sees the dark elves and uh for an instant is uh surprised uh humiliated uh angry annoyed there seems to be a whole flood of emotions over him as soon as he lays eyes on the drow great maybe we can make one of those emotions dead is dead an emotion (laughs) it's the last emotion Oh, that's deep. Wow. Yeah, set that up for a quote. Dead is the last emotion. Chris Perkins. Uh, And then uh, he says, Darling, the drow are here. (laughs) We didn't even set the table. (laughs) And then uh, through the sort of sounds of gushing blood, you hear say, They're early. <laughs> and I'm such a mess. <laughs> a good China. Yes. And uh, ignoring you completely, DF. Absolutely ignoring you. He takes a few more paces forward, um, which means he actually provokes from you, should you wish to stab him. Do you wish to? <laughs> oh, oh, I desire to very much so. <laughs> <laughs> But oh <laughs> shucks, do you think no fool? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, okay. he'd much rather see how this plays out since he seems to have been anticipating these four drow, uh, who are the mostly duke, dicks. The duke says to the dark elves, Cozen included, We have a security breach, but things are well in hand, <laughs> you are quite safe. Give me what I uh, give me what I want. Oh. Go away. <laughs> Give me the flask. Uh, <laughs> I step forward. And uh, all right. It is. Uh, is it my turn? Oh, uh, actually, right now it is DF's turn, then your turn. Okay. <laughs> and I, uh, you can see the Duke is uh, angry and impatient. Uh, but yes, he, he wants the flask. Okay. Um, so, uh, temporarily ignoring all of that, uh, g- get a quick scan of my friends. How are they looking? Uh, well, let's see. Paulton ha- is one stabilization check success. Strix has two. Um, so I'd say Paulton looks a little bit worse off than Strix at the moment. And I'm still unconscious, but stable. Correct. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, I guess I'll try to give Paulton the quick stabilization. Okay. Just uh, I don't fucking know what's happening anymore. I just try to guarantee, try to help make sure that they'll get out of this. Uh, oh, that's good. That's 19. He's stable. Woo! You sort of pull the little arrow out. There's a little spurt of blood, and then you just sort of patch yeah, it up. Real quick. Um, oh, gosh. Okay, so with that, uh, I'm going to take... <laughs> I'll take Paulton and, like, try to, like, make him into, like, a backpack 
She was like, <laughs> okay. over onto me. Okay. She was like flumped over on that. Uh-huh. Uh, I'll use one um, arm to uh, kind of get Evelyn and kind of like half drag her and then make my way over to Strix. <laughs> okay. So you got like Evelyn and Strix in yeah. one arm each and Paulton draped over you. Um, <laughs> you're trying Face to... just completely red, just going, holding all of them. Just... <laughs> <laughs> you're going to burst a blood vessel. Yeah. Uh, Cozen. Uh, apparently, <clears throat> apparently that DF can just be, you know, shot full of arrows and he just ignores them and goes off picking up his friends. He, he's something. He's got to do what he's got to do, man. Yeah. Uh, he has enough. He has enough poison coursing through him to put down an elephant. But you know. <laughs> 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 well, in the most distracting way I possibly can, I'm going to step forward and address Duke Salto and okay. say, say. We were under the impression that there was going to be that this was going to be a run of the mill transfer. If you have a security breach, I don't know if we can necessarily give the flask to you at this point without some assurance that you'll be using it in the way we agreed upon. <laughs> I'm going to resist the urge to wink. uh you can see the uh fire giant duke uh tightens his grip uh you hear the sort of grinding of his gauntlets as his fingers wrap tight around uh his weapon um and uh his brow furrows and he bares his yellow teeth um like this is a this is a figure who does not is not accustomed to being challenged Particularly by one so small. This is this isn't a challenge. This is just us guaranteeing our investment. We brought our flask here. We got this flask for him under the impression that he would be using it against our mutual enemies. And if he can't fail, if he can't uh, perform that, then perhaps can't perform. Can't. <laughs> Sick impotency joke. He says, <laughs> "I never break a commitment." Well, that might be true, but you also committed to us that your fortress was impregnable, and yet I pregnant the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> there's been. There's been... <laughs> <laughs> grotesque pregnability going on here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Virith is absolutely livid at this point and says, shut up, you fool. I, you know, I tell her, if we all die, we all die together now. She better get in on this. <laughs> she says, the fire primordial delivered as promised. Oh, Give it to on. him. She gave it to me, right? She gave it to Choss. Oh, Choss. What the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we said that out loud. <laughs> oh, Choss. Come on, man. Um, uh, Paulton is currently stable and unconscious. Strix, you've got another death saving throw. Come on, at 20s. Help me uh, out. Be okay. uh, I got an 11, so. Okay, you are stable. Yay. Oh, good. Yes, one less thing I have to stable. do. All right, at this point in time, um, unless, uh, Kozen, since you haven't technically acted yet, uh, choose to intervene, Choss, who is carrying the iron flask, will make his way toward the fire giant Duke. Uh, I attempt to subtly trip Choss. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, just make an attack roll against your companion uh 14 all right that does not succeed in tripping choss what the fuck is choss made of <laughs> <laughs> evil <laughs> he is he is choss full of evil that's bad sorry <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, so yes you you tried to chip him uh, trip him but uh all those many, those 30, 40 odd years spent at the Martial Academy of Mele Magther has uh, trained him uh, to not fall for what is essentially a schoolyard trap. 
Uh, <laughs> all right. Can he tell I was the one that tried to trip him? How- yeah, he's pretty damn sure. Uh, how close is Drace to us? I can't blame it on him, can I? Uh, uh, Diath is... <laughs> Diath, just, you, yeah. you, can't, you can't blame it on Diath because he's literally got both arms... He's got two full legs. ...and two guys, a guy straight over his arms and is standing about 10 feet away. This was a setup. <laughs> <laughs> you invited me here thinking we were all going to have a good time. <laughs> all right. This is not looking good for old Cozen. No, um... Yeah, this is your your friends, your quote unquote friends, uh, do not seem to be giving you good looks at the moment. All right. Um, in that case, I can be your buddy. <laughs> you know what? It's it's gonna have to come to that. Uh, I'm I'm taking uh, it. I'm Virith pretty much suspects me of trying to undermine her at this point, right? Uh, there is no doubt in your mind. Yes. All right. Um, we're 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 going for fucking broke here i'm gonna run for it (laughs) (laughs) uh when you say run for it like just run away from everybody run for it no i'm gonna i guess i already took an action i can't yeah i can't shoot choss right now can i no fuck you can yeah (laughs) you can move all right i am going to start moving okay towards df okay um really well Hopefully uh, they will be too busy yes. destroying everything to notice us. Okay. <laughs> uh, the other dark elves, um, Choss won't do anything other than complete his move. Uh, stand before Duke Zalta with the iron flask held up to him. And the iron flask would look like it would just be tiny in Duke Zalto's hands. Uh, but yes. Um, so he holds it up, expecting the Duke to take it on his turn. Meanwhile, Virith uh, casts a spell on you, Kozen. Why? Uh, so I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Uh, it is a 13 plus 3 of my dex. 16, you say? Yeah. Uh, that is enough, yes. Hey, uh, so she blasts you with a lightning bolt. Uh, oh. But only catches you with part of it. Nice. So you take... You take 12 points of lightning damage. What the Come fuck on, is happening man. here? All right, just go with it, man. <laughs> uh, and then uh, the other drow, Zadath, um, he will, boy, um, he will uh, leap at you with his uh, poisoned short sword and attack you twice. Oh. Um, his first attack roll is going to hit you with a 22. Oh, his, second, his second attack roll is also going to hit you with an 18. Uh, so you take uh, a total of 17 points of piercing and poison damage from the first attack. Okay. And then you take a total of 15 additional points from the second attack. So 32 points of damage total. You are... You're, you're killing me. I am. <laughs> literally. literally. <laughs> Try it. Uh, Zalto on his turn uh, will... Uh, do nothing except advance to take the flask. Uh, and when he looks at it, he like holds it up. It's a tiny little flask between his finger and his thumb, and he just looks at it, and he says, oh, I expected it to be bigger. And Vera says, I assure you, being trapped in that flask is much, much bigger. <clears throat> and he says, Honey, darling, Love of my life, we can now light the forge. Oh, good. (laughs) (laughs) It was all worth it. It was all worth it. I hated these guys, but their love is super inspo, man. (laughs) All right, DF. Yes. I have a very important question. Yes. At this point, you're almost being ignored, both by the drow and by Zalto. Right. Zalto's holding this flask, right? Yes. How high up is that? 
Um, so if he's holding it kind of at eye level, um, that would be about 24 feet. Oh, it's eye level. Okay. Yeah, he's holding it up so he can look at the little embossed on its surface. So it would be a little difficult to say someone to leap out of nowhere and snatch it. <laughs> Not. It would be difficult. Impossible? No. Go for it, man. <laughs> I completely believe in you. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 Jared's broken. <laughs> He's, you've done him in. That's it. He's done. Oh no. Um. <clears throat> all right. Because I, 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 I would need to. I would need to climb him to go for it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Perkins. Yeah. Do it. Come on. <laughs> Um, another possibility is if you have a, a healing potion or something, you could give it to somebody with like winged boots. Uh, I did. She was knocked unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to climb up for it because that's not going to happen. Okay. But this is clearly something really important to them. Sure would be a shame if both parties lost it. This is stupid. Okay, I'll gently place allies <laughs> back down. I'm going to throw a dagger at the flask so okay. that he drops it. Okay. And then I'm going to grab it. Okay. Just make an attack roll as though you were attacking him. Okay. Which dice should I use? Which one do I trust? None. None? Just none of them. Not on this stream. <laughs> this is it. This is what I got. Uh, sorry, fam. Oh. oh, wait, no. Does butt rock include attack rolls? Uh, oh, sorry. Just for two hits. I don't believe so, but let me check. Okay. Um, da -da 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 Stone of good luck. Ability checks and saving throws. That's it. Okay, so no. All right, then 15. All right. Uh, so you hurl a dagger up. Um, it strikes Duke Zalto's hand gauntlet and bounces off. <laughs> at which point he looks down at you. I point at the door, Drow. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> not, not necessarily you, but just like, you know, the group. Just Oh, yeah, lump us all in, dude. That's All funny. right. Halton <laughs> uh, uh, is unconscious. Strix is unconscious. The drow go next. Um, Decozen, what would you like to do? I'd like to have not tried to persuade everyone. Because that, see, that seems to have been a really losing strategy for me. <laughs> so, you know, but I don't think counting my regrets is going to help okay. too much. Um, are they, so they are paying attention to DF right now, yeah? Correct. So I could welcome. I, I could run. You, you've got more hit points than me. You'll be fine. Yep, you could try. Uh, you are currently you are currently in melee uh, with one of your former companions. Which? Zadath. Zadath. I always hated him. Um. Fuck, man. Uh. You could do nothing except disengage to get away from him and not provoke any oppies. Uh, all right, I'm going to disengage because this is clearly right. not this is clearly not working out for me. All right. And are you running kind of back the way you came, or? Uh, I'm running off in a, in a new direction. I'm running towards these fallen guys. Are they close? Yes. All right. I'm gonna run towards these fallen guys. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to at least salvage some of this. Okay. Um, you can get to them. Uh, there are three of them lying there. Uh, which one? There's there, there's a, a raggedy looking one, tiefling with horns and black torn moth-eaten garments and a uh, 
Uh, there's a small little uh, cherubic woman with winged boots and okay. uh, curly white and blonde hair, uh, not currently wearing any armor. And then there's a, 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 a bard, a, a slender human fella. So hypothetically, if one of these guys were to look up and see that I had saved them and me dying and I gasped with my last breath, avenge me, which one of them would be most likely to do <laughs> Oh gee, that's a that's a that's a tough one. Um, uh, oh, not this one. <laughs> you you can't tell. I'm just gonna grab the one with the horns then. And, okay. And God start, damn it! Start, dra- start dragging. <laughs> okay. Are you dragging her into the darkness, or are you dragging her away? Away. Oh, pretty direction? much. You know, just just trying to get some okay. to survive to got it. Figure All right. this out. All right. Uh, so, Diaf, you can see that drow with the face tattoo drag Strix off. What the hell? <gasps> it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. I give him the drow hand sign for it's fine. <laughs> uh, so what is get... that like? Yeah, what does that look like? <laughs> Just okay. <laughs> yeah. since, since I didn't get to use my movement in my turn, can I use that to yep. grab the other two? Sure. And then... I'll let you do that. All right. Uh, and then... Oh. So you're trying to beat feet. Yeah. Let's book it. <laughs> okay. Um, so the two of you, um, and you can see Virith is like, nah, uh, but the two of you can see there are two ways to go that aren't toward the darkness. One is into the kitchen, back toward where the cisterns are. Uh, you also recalled seeing some sort of staircase there leading upstairs. Uh, maybe a bit ago. Uh, and then the other way is down a brazier lit hallway to what you, Cozen, know to be the dining room and the elevator shaft. But we came down the elevator shaft. Yes. So we, we can't go back up it. Uh, you can, because well, you could if you had your levitate spell. I didn't, because I used it. Used it today. Yeah. So the elevator shaft is not the best way to go. Right, Diath, you've been, you've been here before as a show of good sign where, as a show of good faith, where do you think we should go? Um, kitchen, kitchen or dining room? Uh, I'll, have we actually been into the dining room at all during this whole? Uh, you have not. Okay, so I, I don't know where the dining room itself connects to. No, and I know the ki- kitchen connects to the. You know, the kitchen connects to the cistern and then the foundry, but there's also a staircase in the kitchen leading up to the upper level, which would take you back toward the mines. You hope. Yeah, I feel which... like. Which yes. these? Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> the elevator shaft doesn't work. We'll have to go through the mines, which the mines are small enough that fire giants can't fit in there. Just fire lizards. But we'll stand a better chance against them than we will fire lizards. Uh, yeah, staircase is our best bet. All right. Okay. Hopefully the, the uh, golem keeps them busy long enough. Okay, uh, when you uh, burst into the kitchen, uh, the doors, the big giant doors to the kitchen are ajar. Uh, you can see uh, that there are a number of creatures here lying dead on the floor. They look like goblins. And you can see standing over their murdered remains uh, with, uh, and sort of clutching a log is Jasper the Dwarf. Uh, you last saw him, he had fallen unconscious or killed back when he was hammered by Duke Dalton oh. in the hallway uh, shortly after Evelyn rescued him. And you can see he's panting and puffing and he's got soot covering him and he looks like he's just been in a fight. And when he sees you barge into the kitchen and you're carrying unconscious folks, the first thing he does is cast a healing spell. <laughs> on, on, on me? On everybody. Yay. What a badass. Good call. Uh, while, while I run into this, can I also give like a little and try to get Waffles to follow? Yes, Waffles Good. will follow on her own. Good. Uh, so everybody gets 18 hit points. Wow. Everybody, everybody? Everybody, everybody. 18? Yep. I am alive! Is that a healing word? <laughs> that is a mer- mass cure wounds. Oh. I'm really glad we saved Jasper. 
All right. So some of you uh, awaken suddenly, uh, feeling healing magic wash over you to realize you're being carried. Strix, you are doubly alarmed because the figure uh, pulling you is a drow. <laughs> so it's like, ah! <laughs> just like push him off. <laughs> just like, like no, no, no. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll drop her. <laughs> yeah. While quietly lamenting that perhaps oh, a tiefling herself, an outcast from society, should not be so harsh. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't say any of this. I just give it in a look that sort of suggests I'm not With the harshest it. wink you could possibly muster. <laughs> like, a, a, very, <laughs> a very disapproving wink. <laughs> so, <laughs> She's just like, maybe it was the spider tattoo. Like, I don't want, I don't want to hurt her physically, just <laughs> emotionally. <laughs> All right, so as soon as, like, Jasper awakens everyone and they're all yeah. like, up onto their feet, I'd imagine a little uh, confused as to where they are and what's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I'll immediately just command to everybody, upstairs now, we're going back through the mines. Yeah. And then uh, lead the way. All right. Unless uh, any of you got an, an idea to... Wait, Strix, do you still have any fireballs? Uh, hold on. <laughs> Uh, Evelyn immediately starts singing a hymn to Lathander. Praise Lathander in his holy mind no! for saving me. I can't tell if I have any fireballs while she's screaming. <laughs> Aren't you glad we're all awake again? <laughs> uh, I don't think I have any fireballs. All right, well, then don't worry about it. We're just getting, we're getting the F out of here. Sorry. We need to leave. All right. Uh, behind you, you can uh, uh, so actually before that happens, um, yeah, you do still hear there's a lot of chaos with the fire giants behind you, but they're way too close for comfort. Uh, Paulton, you're actually next in the initial order. Oh, uh, good. <clears throat> uh, so I just woke up and was told upstairs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can see you're in this giant kitchen, uh, kitchen sized for giants. There's a bunch of dead goblins on the floor and a giant sized staircase going up. Each step is about two and a half feet tall. Unless you got a, uh, got any other tricks to help stave them off. Nope. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You start to climb the difficult terrain that is the staircase uh, heading up. And, uh, Oh, as we do the staircase, I can ca I have darkness for my tiefling ability, so I can okay. leave some darkness behind us in the staircase. All right. So I might just do that, and maybe also, like, I'm trying to think. Oh, I do have minor illusion. I'll can, you sleep leave, can you leave darkness within the dining room? That way they don't know exactly yeah. what direction we went. I can do that, yeah. Perfect. Okay, I'll are do that. Are we all leaving, or are we still on initiative? We're still on initiative. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make it clear that I'm not leaving without waffles. Yeah. <laughs> waffles right, you, is here. You look around in a panic for waffles and oh, there she is. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> waffles, baby girl! And I put her back in the harness, which I'm still wearing. That was oh empty. my god. And I'm like, so, it's okay, baby. Side oh, you. poor baby. Um, <laughs> baby. Where's Juniper? Where's, where's Stinky? Okay, everybody's here. I'm like holding it. I got stinky. He's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're going to cast the darkness spell uh, toward the dining room so that they think you've gone in that direction. Am I hearing that right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. To help so mask our... Uh, it's our, a ploy. It's our rock yeah. toy. Yeah. All right. Um, even though the drow saw you run the other way. Wait, wait, wait. so we're in the dining room right now, yeah? You're in the Going kitchen. Up. Oh, I'm sorry. I misspoke then. Going up the stairs. Because I, I want to like, put the darkness in the kitchen. That way they think like we were trying to hide or something within the kitchen. Sure. Oh, and then, but then Holly said we could... Okay, got it. Yeah. So it's going to go so in the kitchen. Yeah, that was me misspeaking. I'm sorry. It's okay, me. no worries. It's like, where do you want this? Pushing the darkness over. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you want it Three over inches here? to the left. Uh, okay. <laughs> no, no. Two inches to the right. <laughs> okay, it's fine. Let's go. God, it's crooked. Just screw up everything. Your darkness is crooked. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, so you drop it here and then scuttle up the stairs, Strix, uh, and then the drow go. Um, you can hear out in the hallway uh, the female drow blurt, blurting out, we have to stop them. The dwarfs cannot know that we are interfered. 
This is between them and the giants. And uh, at that point in time, uh, now that it's darkness, uh, she goes, ah, oh, shit. It's dark. <laughs> 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 uh, I did not prepare my dispel magic. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes. So you can hear entering the darkness with you um, the drow. Um, and they can't have gotten far. She is going to. Oh dear. Um, I'll do that here. Uh, the drow are going to just fumble around in the darkness to see maybe they find one of you. Uh, Not see. cool. Yeah, I'm just going to have them make perception checks. Uh, everybody who is in the darkness, which would be everybody but Paulton and Strix, make a stealth check for me. You got it. <laughs> oh, ah. natural 20! Oh, nice. Try and, it! And Evelyn, you're not wearing armor, so you have no disadvantage on stealth or anything. It's just 33. A but I still rolled a 3, Chris Perkins. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. So that's a total of five. All right. So, uh, Lathander, awful. Lathander, <laughs> looks down upon us all. Uh, one of the drow, you reckon, uh, grabs hold of you. Uh, and me? And, yeah, and sort of does it in a very unkind way, sort of grabs you by the hair. Excuse uh, me, sir. <laughs> and uh, says something in, El- in Undercommon uh, to his companions. Which probably amounts to I found one of them. I punch him. All right. Um, he is wait, with your his, axe. On his attack, he's going to try to grapple you. Uh, you can make a strength athletics check to oppose him. Maybe that's one that I can actually succeed at this yeah. entire session. Ugh. Oh no. <laughs> Sixteen. Oh, that's good. Um, okay, you are able to pull yourself free of him. I do not appreciate being <laughs> manhandled this way. <laughs> All right. And uh, uh, DF, or sorry, yeah. Evelyn, uh, Evelyn, you're up next. I want to hit him, but I look at the sweet, snoring, little feathery baby. <laughs> it's, it's completely dark where you are. You can't see anything. Well, I still look at it. Yeah. <laughs> kind of nuzzle it a little bit. And I'm just like, it's time to go. And I continue retreating. All right. Now, you, with your winged boots, can actually fly up the stairs and not be hindered by their height. I do, just so I can, like, carefully cradle Waffle so she doesn't get jarred at all. Okay. And up you go. And uh, next up is Dieth. Um, I heard one of them call out within the darkness. Yes. Oof, that's tempting. Um, go for it. <laughs> Sam? Cover, cover my escape. <clears throat> All right. Uh, n- no, rather, so I, I'm going to take out <laughs> one of my throwing daggers. Uh, but rather than throwing it at the voice <clears throat> that was going after Evelyn, I'm going to intentionally throw it uh, past that, the opposite direction that we are going. So we just hear a sound over there. Okay. Just like distraction noise. All right. And then uh, using that with my impeccable stealth roll. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like a phantom. Mm-hmm. Make my way up the stairs, unseen, unheard. Yes. <laughs> Even by your friends. Okay. Uh, so you're all uh, up this, you make your way up the stairs. Uh, Jasper follows uh, swiftly on uh, after Dia. Um, and you eventually get to the top of the stairs. You seem to have at least temporarily lost the drow. Probably because they don't they didn't see the staircase before the darkness was cast. So they right. it was a good call on your part. Um, it'll take them a while to find it. <laughs> when you get to the top of the stairs, you enter what appears to be a large hall, probably used by the fire giants as a gathering hall. There are great pillar four great pillars that support the ceiling, two large tables that have some overturned tankards and empty barrels on the floor around them. Uh, sort of like a little party place for them. There is a dark hearth, a big giant fireplace against one wall, and a hallway directly across from you leading into darkness. There is a wider hallway to your right that seems to lead back out onto an iron gantry 
overlooking the assembly area. And on that gantry, you see Duke Zalto and Duchess Grimscarda's two children looking down. <gasps> They've got oh, their backs to you. Oh, I want Do to it. push them over real bad and just kill them. <laughs> no. Cut off their fingers. Wait, am I still strong? I think I'm still strong. Yeah, you still got you still strong. <laughs> Strict no. We are getting out of here. <laughs> so, so we've been in this area before, yeah? Uh, you have not. Your animals have peered into this area. Oh no. Waffles, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> oh really? <laughs> um, but I can still kind of, I can still kind of get a feel of uh, generally where we at within the, I guess the the facility compared to how we got into here. Yes. Um, so, uh, you think, and you can see that there are more of those vents. Uh, in fact, the the vent covers here have been popped off. It looks like recently. Okay. Um, uh, more of those vents in two walls of this room. Huh. And uh, you can see, we can see Waffles is sort of gnawing on her harness. Like she wants to get out. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we could climb up the fireplace. What? Isn't there a fireplace? Like, shouldn't yeah. that go out? That should go out, right? Presumably the smoke has to go somewhere. It has to go somewhere. But s smoke and fire usually go in there. Well, but so... there's only one fireplace. So if it's not on fire, then, you know, it's. Yeah, currently there's no fire burning in the, the giant hearth. Well, I'll we wait here while you guys go up to make sure no one lights a fire. And you have the boots. You. you could go check. We, okay. We can't, we can't wait for someone. To, <laughs> we can't wait for someone to check. Don't fly up that fireplace. As you as you are shouting that in this room, <laughs> darn it! Why do I always do that? <laughs> the two the two kids just sort of both look back over their shoulders into the room. Oh, for into heaven's sake! Into the fireplace. Go so is, go is there, go! is there any kind of kindling or wood currently at that fireplace? Uh, there is evidence that there was a fire there recently. So there's blackened timbers. They're quite big, like huge, big caber-sized logs stuffed in there. I try to help Diaz push those out. All like, blackened. Spread them. Yeah. yeah, but there's nothing like fresh to burn. Uh, there's there's probably some unburnt, like kindling and stuff piled next to the fireplace. Okay. At which point you hear, Dad. They're upstairs. Wait, Dad. Can I? Can I do a? I want to cast a silent image of their of their their mom, just like in the room with us, like to the side, and as we're just peek out, and be like. <laughs> <laughs> that is a full cool plan. Like with their hands and their hips, like I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to encourage everyone to go up the chimney. I'm like, go, go, go. I'll follow, right. go. That chimney's going to be real high. I'm I mean, the person with the winged boots here. I have the strike potion. I can push everyone up. I'll go last. Plus, I'm like, I'm, fire doesn't even hurt me. I'll be fine. I'm pretty good at climbing. Evil can fly. Paulton, how do you feel? <laughs> Wait, Strix, if you're so strong, Paulton, hold on to her back and climb us out of here. Well, now hold on. Are you just gonna forget about the drow that saved your lives? You can't. Who even that. are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Cozen. <laughs> well, pleased to meet you, and may the thunder shine upon you. Well, if yeah, you're into this too, then I hope you can climb because that's our fastest exit. All right. Also, be ready to hold your breath for when the smoke comes. Real quick, Cozen, how much do you love Loth? Yeah, yeah. Not good enough. <laughs> all right, no, I don't, I don't like Loth at all. Okay, cool. Because, uh, I don't know, I just don't feel like being poisoned today, you know, how it is. I'm going to make well, the mom the mom statue. It's just going to, like, wink at her kids, like, give them a thumbs up. Smart <laughs> idea. Inter use the old wink. It's been working out real well for me. All right, well, we have a plan. We're going out the chimney 
of the of, of this mountain furnace okay. wherever. Meanwhile, it's all timbers like, oh, it, it, I think mom's up here. <laughs> I can also hear her down there, so I think they just cast a spell to fool us. Oh, <laughs> <I was> like... <laughs> <laughs> I'll just I'll just have her mouth. I love you, son. Uh, she's a fire giant. She wouldn't say that. Maybe it'll give him some, you know. Maybe it's maybe... what he's always wanted to hear. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, so you, you give them a moment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Give them a moment. Just get, she just makes a heart <laughs> like. <laughs> uh, what is what is the order that you're going up the shaft? Uh, probably Evelyn first, so she can just fly okay. and won't be yep. hindered by anyone. But I can oh. help lift people because I can fly. You also got waffles with you. Yeah. Uh, how wide is this shaft? So when you look, go into the fireplace and look up, uh, you can see that the shaft is about five feet in diameter. Whoa, so small. For, oh. for fire giants, but I mean, fire giants can't fit up this shaft. Yeah, clearly. but so we can. Okay. Um. God. Yeah. So we'll go. And it's not a. It's not absolutely smooth work. It's like car hewn out of the living rock. So there are there are rough handholds and Great. purchases. Perfect. Okay. Looks like it was carved by dwarves. All right. So if it's rough enough, then it actually is feasible for us to climb it if it's not just completely smooth stone. Evelyn can fly up. I'm pretty good at climbing. Uh, at least I can climb up quickly. Um, Strix, even with your strength, you'll still move the slowest. Uh, and if Paulton, if you're not confident in your own climbing skill, I'd say hold on to Strix while she hoists you up. Other dude, you go last. Why? <laughs> I saved your life. <laughs> yeah, and now I'm trying to save all of ours. God, this is this is surface dwellers for you. <laughs> hey, hey, none of that. None of that, you meanie. <laughs> Right. Okay, so up you go uh, with Evelyn blazing the way. Evelyn, it is so filthy dirty up here. You can barely stand to even touch the walls. That's There's why like I'm flying. I'm not a even thousand touching. years of soot on the walls. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is Jasper still with us? Uh, yeah, and he'll okay. actually. Um... Can I go before Jasper? Sure. Yeah, you can go before Jasper. Yeah. Cool. All right. <laughs> no. uh, Jasper, uh, that was that was awesome the way you healed us. Do you think you can do to help us get out of here faster? Ooh. God. We consign him to death. Uh, let me see. Do, 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 do. Well, he can cast. He can provide illumination if you need that, as you probably would. Uh, uh, so, um, let's see. You can find traps. Fat a lot of good. That'll do. Um, yeah. And given sufficient time, he can do uh, a spell to divine whether or not this is a good idea, idea. but you don't have time for that. Um, the answer is no. Yes. And then uh, let's see. Hmm. Nope. Although he, he does have uh, some more healing. All right. Well. Don't, don't got time, so. Okay. You can also cast Bless, but it doesn't look like you need that at the moment. Yeah, we're not fighting anything. We are yeah. leaving. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, uh, he can cast, however, a spell called Guidance to give bonus, to give somebody a bonus on their climb checks. So hmm. he will do that on you, Dieth. Trey! Why not uh, me? Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you probably have a strength higher than eight. Yeah. <laughs> Because Dieth has these these thin little arms, and uh, Jasper's worried that the climb might just. Yeah. Thank you, Jasper. Uh, so yes, uh, so you get to add. Um, you get to add. It's like one or two. Yeah, yeah. Also, before we go into the shaft, I'm going to yeah. change the minor or change the silent image to be okay. just a facsimile of us. Okay. Just in the other corner of the room. Okay. So this sort of 
dumbly staring party. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. way too accurate. All right. Uh, as you hurl yourselves upstairs, those who are not flying, please make a strength athletics check. Paulton, you don't have to make one because you are hanging on to Strix. And my strength is 23. 20, 23 so you, that's right. So you add plus six. Okay. That's, yeah. That's I've also sweet. got that second story work, so I can climb up pretty quickly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got 18. And uh, don't forget, DF, you add a D4 to your roll because of the guidance spell. Oh, add D4. Okay. D4. Got it. Yay. How'd you do, Cozen? I rolled a 19. Excellent. Strix? 18. Good. Yeah. 13. Good enough. All right. Uh, so you crawl, up, you crawl up this shaft. Evelyn, you get to the top way before they do. And uh, you see that it tilts about 45 degrees and continues to climb at a 45 degree angle. Oh, that's really hard for me to to not get dirty. <laughs> yeah, it makes it really difficult. You're like, you're, oh, geez. No. Yeah. Strix will yell up and be like, I'll fix it for you once we get out of here. Yeah. Thank you. That's all right. Uh, 45 degrees is way easier to climb out of than Yeah, it basically yes. just becomes a hill, so. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. And after a 45 degree climb uh, for about 100 feet, it meets up with what looked like two other chimney shafts coming in at various angles and they all become one shaft going up uh, okay. another 30 feet and then breaking into what appears to be a large soot stained cave a cave there's yep. a cave up here is there any fresh air coming out or anything like we can and you don't smell any fresh air um, no. And when you come up into this cave, you can see that it, there's actually a smoky haze hanging there, like it's sort of trapped up here and hasn't completely filtered out into other areas yet. So Evelyn, your, your attempt to stay clean was probably for naught in the end. <laughs> Strix really likes this place. <laughs> I immediately start looking around for where the smoke can go out of this place. Okay. It reminds um, her of Sigil. Yep. As you uh, look around and study your surroundings, it becomes very clear to you that this cave and the tunnels leading away from it must be part of the much larger mining complex. Um, it, it's probably it, this looks like a corner of or part of uh, the mines that run through the mountain. Oh, we get to do lots more exploring. <laughs> <laughs> But it. It, but it appears uh, as you come up here <laughs> and all your sarcasm alarms go off, um, <laughs> the, uh, that this is definitely a much safer place, probably the safest place you've been in in a long time. Yeah. You also until, get the, until they light a fire. Yeah. You also get the impression that um, there aren't any tracks in the soot and accumulated stuff on the floor here. This is a section of the mines that is not visited. I look around as I wait for the rest of my party to come up and in this cave, do I see any large boulders or anything I could potentially use to like clog the chimney behind us? Yes. With enough, uh, if you want to put your uh, time and attention toward doing that, you can amass enough rocks and boulders and stuff to essentially create a, a cap out of rocks and that cover this thing. So yeah. while I'm waiting for them, that's what I'm doing. I'm gathering those. Okay. You're all up. You all get up, and oh, God, you're yes. all in this cave, safe and sound. All right. And then I'd imagine uh, Evelyn points out the block the chimney plan. And then yep. uh, I'll immediately direct everyone to help her with that. We're okay. clog up that chimney to stop as much smoke as we can. Okay. I uh, sure well, love teamwork. Yeah, this is a great teamwork exercise. Yeah. Uh, so uh, over, the <laughs> next, over the next hour, you gather and assemble rocks. For An hour? <laughs> Uh, yeah. So that give us a short rest. <laughs> not not if you're piling rocks. If, if Strix, if Strix, Strix you don't isn't want to, gonna help. I was gonna say if you don't want to be if you don't if you don't want to use your super strength to help, you can sit. <laughs> Such a dick. Move. I thought there'd be like I thought there'd be like one big rock that with our super strengths combined we could just oh, like. Okay. You could. There isn't a, a a huge rock that size, but you could essentially break off um, a section of. Uh, like a, an outcropping from the wall. Yeah, I like point to this spot and I'm like, Strix, punch right here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just like right. one, one punch yes. man the wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
So you're able to get a, a big rock and drag it over to essentially cover the opening. Yeah. All right. That takes about 10 minutes. Sweet. Great. Good. Now run. let's go. So it looks like there's only like one exit out of this kind of cave where there are, there are two, uh, <laughs> there are two tunnel exits out of the cave leading in opposite directions, but you're not sure which direction they go like cardinal directions. You've kind of lost right. your bearings. I figured. All right. Uh, oh gosh. Can we, can we rest for a second or would that you give could, us, you could definitely rest if you want to. Why don't we, Carlton, why don't you get your, your party, your party hut? We're not sleeping here. Oh, I'm so tired, though. I know. But we're also still balls <laughs> deep inside the fire giant mountain. I, since I'm all covered in soot, I'm like, eh, and I like hug crying little Strix to my bosom and try to comfort her. It's okay. <laughs> like, no, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> She'll step away and then oh, cast her. Oh, she's cranky. Uh, stop. She'll cast the prestidigitation <laughs> to clean your outfit so that you'll stop touching her. <gasps> Ooh. Nice. Okay. All right, so all the dust and so just falls away from you. Is, the, uh, is there any kind of movement within the smoke that was in here, or is it all just kind of resting? It's all resting. Damn it, okay. Good idea, though. Yeah. I just ask myself, what is Lathander telling me? Huh. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so you're looking for uh, a sign An insight of check. I'm looking for an insight check, I guess. Okay. Trying to uh, make an insight check. I roll a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> you think Welcome with that roll, with that roll, um, you are convinced that the maybe maybe Lathander sent you this this dark elf uh, for a reason. What that has nothing to do with which way to go. <laughs> are are they you know, actively searching for ways out? Uh, they they can see two ways out. Um, yeah, but. but, but I, can I see that they are sort of contemplating the Yes. I go right up to is. Absolutely. You, you're privy to all this. Well, in that case, uh, I say, uh, no, wait, no, wait a minute. You guys aren't planning on leaving, are you? I go like right up to his face. I'm like really, really <laughs> close to it, like this close. And I'm like, I see the blessings of Lathander. <laughs> <laughs> you will lead us. Which way do we go? <laughs> I... I'm just so stunned for a second, <laughs> but I decide to roll with it. Yeah. And I just say, I don't know what God sent me, but I'm fairly sure whatever God sent you sent you to stop what Zalto is planning. Or did you think that was just a regular flask he got? I didn't see a flask. I was unconscious. What flask? <laughs> I look at Diaz. I look at, I look what at flask? Diaz specifically and say, or did you think that was a regular flask? <laughs> at that point, it's like back to full seriousness mode. And that, at this drought, it's like, fine. Clearly you know something. Tell us everything. Well, I can only tell you what Virith told me. But Zalto <laughs> salt, sought our services to procure the means of reinvigorating his familial colossus. You might have seen it down there. Uh, we sure we did. We wrecked it. Oh, good, good. Well, it, <laughs> it'll be... Well, now, wait a minute. Did you wreck it, wreck it, or just... They tipped it over. All right, that's, that's, <laughs> not, that's not really... Wrecked, is it? We at least all their plans and attempt at destroying whatever that heart thing was. You it didn't, didn't go great. You definitely, definitely inconvenienced him slightly. <laughs> slightly? And for that, you should be commended. And this is me commending you by telling you you actually have solved nothing. Uh, that flask contained Megara, the Dawn Titan, a fire primordial, enormously powerful and destructive enough to reinvigorate his familial forge, Iron Slag. And with it, He's going to resurrect that Colossus and come and destroy pretty much, you know, everything. And then I squint and said, I never got a chance to ask, did dwarves send you or was that, or do they just really not like dwarves? They just really don't like dwarves. Oh, well, now they think you're, uh, now they think the dwarves are with you. So, and you know, Jasper if you just sort of waves at that point. <laughs> <laughs> 
So if you leave this as is, he's going to use that Colossus to destroy every dwarf he possibly can. And those that he can't destroy, the drow will come mop up later. And then, you know, I I don't want to say it'll be your fault, but it, it'll, it'll be your fault. And what business would the drow have in this? Who they want say? to foment war. We do like war. That's all they ever do to us surface folk. To what purpose? To kill and conquer. Like, have you not met a drow before? Or? We met because one they... and he was nice. All right, yeah, no, he, that's... Evelyn's we... face was all sunny. And then as he said, like, to kill and conquer and all this stuff, she starts, like, kind of, like, wrinkling her nose. Like... <laughs> <laughs> but you've met one that isn't all about killing and conquest. Here's one that's just about killing. They just want to turn us all into slaves. It is true. I don't Vera... like people turning into slaves. I don't like that very much at all. Well, then you're going to have to stop, Zalto. Recover that flask. And then I shrug and say, or just blow it up. I like blowing things up. Can't the... blow anything up if I don't have any blowy uppy left. Well, the uh, Colossus is powered by a heart, which I believe you saw in the yeah. you. Uh... <laughs> I saw it. We saw it! <laughs> you, uh... <laughs> And you're making exactly this gesture. <laughs> so I say, tell me how that went. <laughs> oh, wounds. Enough still healing. Semantics. Still healing. Something as strong as the adamantine heart that powers the Colossus can only be powered by Megara. But it can also be destroyed by Megara. What's you a Megara? Megara is the fire primordial in the flask that we delivered to Zalto. <gasps> and that you, pointedly looking at DF, almost stopped. You know, points for trying. <sighs> well, yeah, at least we get some points. You're not exactly making a real strong case for us keeping you around. <laughs> I don't really mind if I would suggest keeping me around because you guys don't seem to be doing too great here. So that's are, rude. Neither are you. <laughs> right. me. Maybe that's what we want you to think. All right. I'm clear. I'm going to go along with the idea that this is the most cunning plan I've ever seen. And then reiterate that unleashing the fire primordial in that flask in such a way could it destroy the adamantine heart. It could end the Colossus and end Zalto's threat to the dwarves and just about anyone, considering it would probably blow up the mountain. So the flask itself just needs to be, what, opened? Opened and melted on top of the heart. Opened and melted? So, you know, well, you, I'm you, sorry. Believe, you believe that Megara is trapped in the flask. Opening it will release her. Um, right. If she is just released, it'll be a fire primordial you know, on the loose and uncontrollable, all that. Madness. On the lamb. On the lamb. Uh, if she were released in Zalto's adamantine forge, <clears throat> she would be trapped in the forge. The thing is, she's the only one hot enough, essentially, to melt the adamantine heart. And right. Heart to be destroyed, that would be bad. Within the and forge. Explosive. Within the forge, she's trapped. Yes. But by the heart. Her. If she can, if she's unleashed, she can destroy the heart, and doing so will pretty much take care of Zalto. Uh, Kozen, you know that since Zalto has the flask, it is likely that he almost certainly it could be uh, Megara's already been from the flask. To... It could. Time That's always a chance. Yeah, but there's also a chance that he's busy tending to his wounded wife right now. And That's there's also awesome. a chance that he's searching for the dwarven spies running around his citadel. Absolutely. Who could pop back up and sabotage it at any moment. No! <laughs> what, have go you, home. what have you got to lose? There won't yeah. be a home if you leave now. Yeah. He's not going to stop with the dwarves. Uh, sorry, Cozen, did you tell them, I can't remember, uh, did you tell them what happens if the heart is destroyed? You mentioned something about the mountain. Uh, yes, the mountain <laughs> will explode. Wait, so... Pretty much with enough destructive force to level the mountain and possibly everything within sight of the mountain. And, like, all of us. Yes, all of us. I so... mean, we, we are in the mountain. And there's no way we could run far away enough to not be destroyed along with it. So what if we were to instead 
take the heart, blow it up somewhere else? Well, that's a possibility, but there's also no telling how long it would take to explode the mountain. Could take minutes, could take hours. It's a primordial. She works at her own pace. Well, all I know is that poor little Strix is tired. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not feeling so great myself. And I have the teachings of Lysander teach us that when one can rest to replenish, one should. You know what? That's a great idea. Just sleep on it. And I'm sleep sure on it. I'm sure Duke Zalto will just hang out in the meantime. But also question. Mm-hmm. Say that this whole mountain will blow up, right? Right. All right. So let's say. We were like in a hut. <laughs> it's a good hut. <laughs> a magical hut. A mighty powerful hut. Go on. You have intrigued me with your hut speak. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever's in the hut is protected. So then, like, you know, it all balances out, right? Because we'll be good. Right? I, ge- I gesture to my armor. I say, I'm, I'm not a wizard, man. Like, I can't tell you for sure if that's going to work or not. I don't feel good about blowing up everybody in this mountain. There are a lot of slaves here, some really cute little doggies. I don't feel like we can just blow them up. <laughs> well, yeah, not with that attitude. Paulton, do you really believe that your hut could potentially withstand the explosion of an adamantine hut? Caused by a titan? Caused by a primordial. I'm sure his hut could withstand anything he wanted. Strix, oh. uh, Strix you can make an arcana check. At this point. Yes, please. I'm very dubious of all of this. <laughs> uh, 16. Okay. Um, so the, the dome of force that surrounds the hut, um, creatures and objects within the dome are protected. Obviously, you can move them inside. All other creatures and objects are barred from passing through it. Um, so spells and other magical effects can't extend through the dome or be cast through it. So if the heart is this big magical construct, it's possible that it, the hut would in fact um, protect you. Um, and now you might be buried. Uh, <laughs> Under a mountain, <laughs> literally. But uh, the other thing you know is that based on the heart as you saw it briefly, and what Kozen has just told you about the uh, fire primordial, um, He's right in that it's very difficult to predict. Like, if you were to give the heart to Megara or throw the heart in the fort where she is trapped, you don't know how long it would take her to melt through its adamantine exterior to trigger the explosion. All right. It's enough. It's sort of unpredictable. I'll relay this to the group begrudgingly. So, what do you think we should do, Strix? Oh, don't ask me that. That's not. No. Mm-mm. I just want you she's to know that I cover, care about your gonna, opinion. She's going to cover her head up with her cloak and just lay on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to know that I care about your opinions. I love you very much. <laughs> no. So it could take minutes or it could take potentially hours. Can I tell that Paulton is a bard? Yeah, probably. He's got a lute and he's got bagpipes. and I look at him and say, potentially enough time for a very dramatic exit. Wink. <laughs> dude i don't know what your deal is but you shut up start winking and we all almost died so. <laughs> oh, all right everyone's alive because of your old pal cozen don't wink well, again how about how about this how about this cozen <laughs> why don't you go in and do this as a stealth mission again i gesture to my armor and say i'm flattered but we can make you invisible. It's fine. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're asking us to do it. I'm or not asking. Ask- Burke, like you go down there and do it. I'm, you're asking not, us to. I'm, I'm just not, saying. I'm not asking anything. I'm just telling you what will happen and how you can stop it. The point yeah. is, at this, knowing what we know now and what needs to be done. This is damn well close to a suicide mission. That's what I was trying to say. And, you know, I don't, I just don't want to be dead again. Just. I, yeah. hopefully. By, by all accounts, DF, you've completed the task that King Harnoff set before you. Yeah. I just think there's certain to be another better way to handle this as soon as we just get rested. 
I don't think that there's any way that Lathander would want us to blow up an entire mountain of people. I know that he has something else in mind. I look over toward the drow. I'm just like, well, I mean, this guy seems to know everything about everything, so I got faith in him doing it on his own. <laughs> <laughs> Evelyn's like delighted by that wink, and she's like, yes. <laughs> I look at him like, as a feel? <laughs> well, and that's where we'll stop for tonight. <laughs> All right. did, I su- did I survive? You survived. Oh, yes. yeah. so far. They this is the end of your adventure. Yes. So, uh, I Sam- his throat. Done. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sam, are you able to join us next week? Yes. Great. Uh, then we will continue with the adventures of the Waffle Crew, uh, who are currently out of jeopardy, out of initiative, out of resources, out of hit points, and going to take a nice overdue rest. Yeah, I'm going to need a good seven days to figure out how many. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have stuff to think about. Uh. All right. Uh, uh, any Anybody got uh, something to uh, announce or push before we uh, break off for the week? I'm playing my Miss Clicks D and D devotion game right after this on Twitch.tv slash Miss Clicks M I S S C L I K S. And as always, I have Twitch Weekly on Friday at 1 p.m. on slash Twitch. See you there. And uh, again, said this a couple weeks ago, but toward the end of the month, twenty uh, seventh and twenty eighth of May, I'll be playing in Orlando, Florida, and Atlanta, Georgia on the Cool and Good Tour. So it's going to be a ton of fun and. Uh, if anyone the day before in Orlando is going to the uh, Starbomb Ninja Sex Party Tupperware Remix Party show, I'll be opening that. So that'll be a ton of fun. So uh, cool. no, mm, hang out. It'll be a good time. Yay. And cool. I'll be, I've been streaming on Thursdays. So if you guys want to come watch me make stuff, I'm streaming on Thursdays. So I watch all I stream. It's amazing. <laughs> yep. Yay. And Sam, what's the name of your latest book? Uh, the Mortal Tally. But I also just released the third issue of my comic with Boom Studio called Brave Chef Brianna. Cool. It's about a girl who opens up a restaurant in a city full of monsters. Nice. <laughs> if, if you want to buy that, it will help me to not die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we laugh, but, you know, that's pretty serious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that is the long and short of it. Yeah. Yeah, cool. And don't forget, there's always the Dice Camera Action subreddit. Yes. If you got any ideas how we can get out of this mess, <laughs> we're listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody got any clever plots they want to share? Yeah. I, I totally missed this thread, but there's a thread called, Is the Waffle Crew Totally Effed? A message to Evelyn. Much love. <laughs> I missed that, but I'll read it now. Thanks. <laughs> there, there's some, uh, there's some great fan art in there. Uh, one I saw was a uh, DF atop uh, the the Duchess, sword yeah. in hand, ready to take her out. That's really cool. Nice. All right. Well, then that's a wrap. Have a fun game, Anna, and we'll see everybody next week. Thanks. See you later. Yay. All right. Bye-bye, bye, bye, everyone.